Um, so going by schedule, uh, we will uh, start with the first session, which is uh, introduction to this mapathon. And uh, what are the questions we have to answer, uh, how to answer this, and what are the tools we give through this mapathon for you to use and resources. So with that, uh, I'll share my presentation. And uh, participants, put your questions on the YouTube channel. Uh, we will answer it. And sometimes the experts can also answer it through the Google Meet. So save your questions to the Q&A session. Uh, but also, we will take questions now and then in the YouTube. Thank you. So with that, uh, please share my screen. So a uh, warm welcome to all the participants. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's good to see that a lot of participants are already joining the YouTube. So what we'll discuss now is um, how uh, and what is this Mapathon about? Um, on the content side, uh, what is a Mapathon in general? And uh, this is a very unique and specific uh, Mapathon. We'll go into the details of uh, how it is specific. Why and what is the need for right now a mapathon in India? Because there's a lot of hackathons. So what is this need, especially with mapping and QGIS? Um, the uh, spe specifics about IATB, ISRO, AICT mapathon, there were a lot of questions on the website. So we will go through a little bit of that. Uh, steps involved in the mapathon, what we are expected to do. Uh, and uh, one point which was very, um, very uh, good for us is that it, it is open to all Indians. So we see a lot of participation from school level to college level and also at government agencies level. So there is no age or uh, gap between what education you have to have for this mapathon, which is very good. Uh, so the benefits for mappers. So we know that the maps are made for India, but what specific benefits does the mapper get, uh, like uh, other than building the QGIS and other tools and knowing about ISRO data. Uh, specifics about GIS would be uh, given an introduction and the FOSI uh, spoken tutorial uh, resources that you have for QGIS. Again, uh, please note that there are multiple uh, open source softwares, but uh, we specify QGIS, uh, you can use still any open source software, but we specify in QGIS because uh, that is what we have prepared for FOSI and Spoken Tutorials. And ways forward, what is coming up after the Mapathon? We'll start with that. Okay. So what is this Mapathon? Uh, in general, a Mapathon is just making maps, bringing a lot of people together, and they will actually work on a similar theme or a theme that is uh, new and novel they will look at. But how is this Mapathon uh, different is that um, they make maps and they also build the capacity of people to make maps. So there are two aspects in Mapathon. One is you make maps you understand the data. And the second part is that you actually build a capacity and an army of people that can make maps. Why do you need maps? Because maps uh, have been used across every discipline now. If you would look at uh, ranging from human si humanities and science to, uh, to even geography, geology, everything now use maps. Um, and there are a lot of softwares to use maps, and that is where the Mapathon here we specify that you will be using an open source. Uh, I'll come to a part why we specify open source so that uh, it is more clear. Um, and in a Mapathon, uh, there is two parts, as I said, you make maps, and that is a, a software that you use, and the data, you understand the data. So there's a lot of, and lots of data that is being generated, which can be mapped. Uh, we will go through the steps in uh, what differentiates a data from a mapping data. Uh, and a lot of time it is expensive. Okay, So making a map and getting these data is expensive. That is why this Mapathon, uh, specifically we say open source, so that you can use what is freely available uh, for everyone. Uh, this is what has made a very unique combination. IETB is one of the leading um, education centers in India, uh, and ISRO is a leading uh, space agency across the globe, and uh, the only one for, you know, the most important one for India. And AICT, as everyone knows, is very important for education system. Here we are bringing together all these partners. Uh, IITB also is the technical partner because they, they would like to see what can be, can be done with these databases that we create. So uh, it brings together a beautiful combination of uh, these three key players. So here we use uh, QGIS as a software, an open source software, plus the ISRO data set. Uh, there is lots and lots of data available online, different um, satellites and sources, but our, our own ISRO data set we need to use. Okay, So there is a reason because uh, we need to promote our own data set, which is, has tremendous uh, potential and capacity, and that is where this Mapathon is very unique. And 
we are making maps for india okay so that india maps can be used by others in any field um, relevant to uh, their specific research interest or question and they can use it for example if you make a road map um, you may not use a road map for a place in mumbai but someone who has access to the map and they need to use it they can use it and that is what we are trying to promote here in open archiving the maps so let's look at the need for maps and especially in india need for local maps uh, maps local maps when i say local maps it is uh, made at a specific small scale okay or, uh, or higher resolution at a very small area that covers a very small area those maps are still missing uh, and because these maps take so much money to make uh, and uh, an, an investment of time and and human capacity it is very very difficult so we still need a lot of local maps that can help and it could be related to anything like bird migratory uh, pollution water drought as the speakers were saying uh, before okay and need to access the data a lot of times you don't get access to the data uh, it could be observed data you don't get access to it um, there's a lot of uh, blockages so what we do is we bring them together in a mapping environment because isro data uh, it is it is a data that is taken for a a uh, different purpose okay it's it's an image or or something and we try to include it into our problem statement so that is where uh, the need for access is taken care of this need for a data update so most of the data you see on paper format that i'm showing here on my screen on the top right uh, is a paper map most of these are still dated to the british era okay so we don't have an updated map so this is the time when a local map can be updated by local people because you know the area better if if you select the state that you are from uh, you would have more information than us so it, that is where we are bringing all this information together need for local capacity it's not only that we want uh, to get the data and map it but also you should map it so that you will get the capacity you know like suddenly if your district collector wants maps uh, they should not be going out to a consultancy which charges a lot but can get students and anyone who has participated in this uh, mapathon to make the maps uh, a lot of consultants charge very very high amount for these kind of maps so here we are building a local capacity so that you can make these maps so on the bottom what you see is a lot of self uh, done maps uh, and maps that can uh, range from india scale uh, to a very road scale very very small scale and also some research analysis the contour maps you see on the third is contour maps and what does this lead to is a self reliance our own uh, motto we have atmanirbhar bharat right so we can build this together like making maps and a uh, lot of data uh, the partners uh, very interesting partners as i said we are all leaders in our own field iitb isro and aict um, and with this um, i would like to go get into uh, the website for a second to see to to explain what is in the website resources so that uh, those who are interested can actually get the data from it because there's a lot of questions we are getting but all these information are shared in your uh, website okay so let me open the website for a second so the partners you see on the top are all the major partners that are um, contributing to this uh, webinar and uh, the home tab about problem statement are all in the home page so that you can easily access uh, we have a special faq section where you can uh, see what questions have been already answered uh, let me start with that um and you could see that uh, you can post your question to the forum uh, you can actually go to a forum and ask people the questions and uh, some of our students are ready to help you okay you will have to first uh, uh, register to get into the forum and post your question and the students will be happy to uh, help you and these are some other faqs we always populate it so when we started the mapathon event it was five questions now it's nine so uh, slowly if your questions are coming relevant we will add it to here okay so that everyone can access to it so coming back to the home okay so uh, in the home page you'd see the important dates please go through the dates um, uh, it is very uh, we, because we close it at the midnight so if i say 18th we close registration by midnight it will close uh, and once your registration is over you will be getting a submission link with a submission number so please wait for that and um, i'll give you a slide on when you, you should contact us if you don't get the information the results will be on janth so if you click the registration statistics you can see an updated map of where the registrations have become uh, total registrations right now stand at 8 am in the morning at 
um, which means uh, 3,068 teams were registered in the morning and total participants are 4,881. If you look at the spread, it's a beautiful spread that we cover all the regions, including Andaman, uh, Lakshadweep we're still waiting for. Uh, but uh, the other thing we look at is, um, if you look at the participants themselves, you see that some range from even homeschool, which means a student which uh, doesn't have access to school or homeschooled, even they are participating. And right from there to the top in universities and colleges in the country are participating. Uh, all the IITs have registered and, uh, and NITs and, all, and even government uh, agencies. We also have medical school and law school. So that's how this data can be useful for any discipline. So you can look uh, at some details about the Mapathon, a very short and very brief um, um, introduction. Uh, what is a Mapathon that we covered? It is about mapping, making maps, but not just any maps. Whatever you're going to make would be accessible to the general public. Uh, so it is it is kind of helping to create databases. Uh, the eligibility to participate is all Indian nationals. Uh, there are a lot of questions on this. Uh, you have to be an Indian national to participate. Um, and then the flowchart is very simple. You register, you learn or use uh, any open source software, example, QGIS. Uh, so we have given enough time for registration and making the maps so that you could even learn this software. It is uh, quite easy and self-learnable. I learned it myself. Uh, so if I could do it, I think uh, most of you can do it with the resources available right now. Uh, you could look at create maps uh, with boundaries. So also the boundaries and data we are giving, and then you submit it, win certificates and prizes. The benefits is uh, uh, we will be building a capacity uh, of space applications and also recognition for the ISRO data, um, making us an Atman Nirbar in global GIS hub. You will also be able to think about these problems because you are making these maps. Okay? So all these 10 uh, statements will be covered by ISRO in a very detailed manner after me. Uh, you will also have the resources. Uh, most of the resources will be discussed today by our own ISRO partners um, and which links you can get. Okay? This is a very important link. Uh, so for example, uh, all these databases would come in uh, different spatial resolution. But if you want your own district or own state, you can come here and click this link. If you click this link, it will open a FTP site uh, or a storage site where you could download the shape file. To know what these extensions are, you would need to take the tutorial. So those who know GIS know which of these files represent the GIS format. So you can just click it. And you can see here that uh, I have boundaries at the India scale, that is the entire India boundary, uh, the district boundary, and state boundaries. So we have three levels of uh, boundaries available for you. Please use this data because the other data are uh, sometimes you get from online maybe uh, different. And we are putting a disclaimer: this is only for research purposes. Okay, so please don't use this as um, you know the definite definite uh, boundaries. It is for uh, research and problem solving. The tutorials, as I said, you could go to this link and you would be uh, taken to uh, QGIS uh, tutorials that we have made uh, and it is always available for a public and it's also available in different languages. We are also operating it in uh, English, Hindi, Malayalam, uh, Tamil and other languages are coming. I'll go get into what is QGIS uh, from FOSI and SD later in the thing. Then we have our partners and those if you would like to share this poster, Click on the poster and a good poster comes up. Uh, you can easily share this with other students and participants. OK, so um, this is all with the um, uh, web page. And uh, if any questions, please get back to us on this mapathon at fossi.in. Uh, you can also go to the forums and place your questions. OK, so uh, let me now share my uh, presentation again. So. Uh, Participations. Uh, we are very, very happy. Uh, to be honest, uh, we didn't expect so many regions to be covered uh, as soon, like within a week. All major regions are now covered. Uh, most of the districts are being picked uh, across all schools. Uh, when I say across all schools, I've noted in the registration we have uh, ranging from um, private schools, public schools, government schools, all the schools are present. So we have all the, that is the beauty of uh, this open source. It is free for all and the software is free for all. So everyone can uh, use it. It is across ages. I've seen school students, college students, and even working professionals from government agencies participating. Sectors, as I said, there's law school, medical, and different disciplines are also participating. 
um, across agencies. Uh, we have uh, been very fortunate to get uh, many uh, government and private agencies, even consulting agencies have participated. Um, a homeschool, that was very, very uh, happy for me to see that a homeschool student is participating. And it creates a leveling playing field. So it, everyone is put on the same uh, scale because you're using an open source data and also an open source uh, mapping platform. So the participation is very good. So it is going to be a tough competition. So this is what I updated uh, a couple of days ago and you could see the beautiful presentation. Yeah. So what are the benefits? Uh, it makes a, on overall uh, scale, I'm saying it, it makes India and Atman, Atman Nirbar Bharat uh, and creates a self-sustainability. Uh, space applications uh, has been uh, targeted here because one side you collect this data, but you also need to apply this data. And that is when you associate with a problem statement and you start applying it in a very detailed fashion. And it also create, makes uh, pathways to make India the global GIS hub and um, an enabler platform for collaborative problem solving. Once you understand this problem, you will get noticed that it is not a one discipline or one man's uh, solution. It, you will have to bring in a lot of team and a collaborative problem solving environment. That is what this will uh, help you. Uh, all of you would be recognized for your work. Uh, all submissions will get a certification and prizes for the top best, um, best submissions. Recognition of capacity, uh, I will stress on this because once you've made these maps and submitted, it will be housed in open archive systems uh, in a very detailed fashion. For example, we'll have India's map and all the, uh, let's say Maharashtra, all the maps in Maharashtra will be put and segregated by discipline. So anyone who wants these Maharashtra maps can just click Maharashtra and then click, uh, for example, I need schools, uh, COVID uh, hospitals, they can click these maps and then look at it. So, uh, and we will not take the credibility. We will uh, like or, and also the uh, credits for the work. It will be given to the person who made the maps. I'll show you an example. So how do you make maps? Now I've shown you the data and, and ISRO would be help, uh, following up with uh, what data they have and, and available for free public. But before that, let's take a step that now you get the data, how do you map it? And that is where GIS comes. So GIS is a computer-based uh, system, uh, a simulation or a software tool, which is helpful for uh, collecting and arranging and, and managing your spatial data. Spatial data is some a data which has an association with a space. For example, if I take a number or uh, any record, if it doesn't have a space attached to it, so now I'm attaching Chennai, for example, I know a number of population, which is 20,000. Now I'm attaching Chennai to it. So now I know Chennai has 20,000 population, whatever population it is. So uh, that is the association that GIS builds. So that is spatial into GIS data. It also allows you to uh, take one data set and apply different models to it. For example, uh, you cannot just take census data and understand why um, um, or how many people have to get medicine. Right. So you, you have other data and that GIS environment gives you a lot of freeway. You can bring different data and make it into one data source. The data was information. Data by itself differs uh, from information. Uh, data is of little or no use, I would say, without transformation into information. That is why we say information technology, not data technology. Data is just numbers and things you collect. But information is when you convert it into something useful. Information is an answer to a question based on raw data. And that is done by your GIS systems. We transform that using GIS. Example population data, if you just give numbers, there's no meaning. But if you attach it to spatial uh, indicators or spatial data, then it has a meaning. GIS not only helps you to make one data, it, it takes all the data together and gives you a composite understanding of the problem because the problems are complex. You cannot just have one data to explain it. You need a complex uh, data structure. The GIS process starts like this. It's very simple to our mapathon. You have start with a defined problem. Okay, You define a problem or take a problem. Then you understand the problem and understand the GIS criteria, what maps to make, how to make. That is your flowchart. Then you go to uh, build a data set, import data set. Here is where ISRO has the data set ready for you. And you can also bring your data. For example, ISRO can give you the land use, land cover data, and you can put specifically where the Anganwadis are present, where the schools are present. That is your data. You can build it into it. And that is where GIS helps. 
then you can do some analysis, GIS analysis. For example, I can say how, how far is the distance between the school and the hospital, and that distance can be calculated in GIS. Then the output, you can take the output as a map, and that map it will lead you to make a decision on the problem. You had a problem, you, you come through it, and let's say, that, as I said, I need to know what is the distance between the school and the, and the hospital, because if suddenly happens, I need to get the children to the hospital, and these are the criteria I build, I get the data, and I come to a decision. Like, what is the distance? But I don't stop there, I can even continue to refine the problem and go through the cycle again. So this is what GIS helps you. Okay, so uh, now we've looked at a software, what you could use, and what are the data that comes in, okay? So a lot of data is stations, survey, field, register data. They look like this. You collect data from the field, uh, uh, your PCA analysis from the villages, your census data are numbers and tables, okay? You can collect data from IMDs, um, weather stations. You, everything is online. You can also look at newspapers and collect how much locus. So what you're seeing is an, a locus insect uh, taking up a field and also big data so data comes in different formats and and the sizes you can take any data you want these are observed physical primary data you can bring that into a remote sensing environment you can combine that with remote sensing environment using gis so now we have looked at why you need gis as a software tool and the data that can support to it you can start with observed data and also join your uh, remote sensing data and these are some of the satellites very beautiful satellites from ISRO that you could use. Okay, so why open source? Again, uh, proprietary software is very, very expensive. So we promote softwares that is um, free and open to everyone. And India is slowly moving into that sector. Okay. So I started learning um, you know, proprietary software in my PhD because there was not much open software. But now that is being built so that everyone can use it. It is very expensive, these software. So we are promoting the use of open software. And one of them, one of them is QGIS. You can go to this uh, site uh, and you can find how to download and, and what are the um, different options to download. Always download the stable version. Don't go for the newer version. The newer version is always they test it. They keep testing and updating it always go for the stable version because for your uh, application stable is very very important so overview of gis uh, qgis uh, spe specifically quantum it's called quantum gis was started early 2002 uh, by gary sherman and um, it is under public license so anyone can use it it is very versatile unlike proprietary software it can run on any operating system and it has a very live and vibrant GIS community, QGIS community. What do you mean a community? Is they co-develop this platform and if any question comes, they can answer it for you. They can make modules for you, uh, like we are making tutorials that we are part of this community. And by participating in this mapathon, you become a global community of QGIS because now you know how to use QGIS. You can also go to this forum and answer questions. The forum is also given in this link. Let's go to the top uh, link you will see the forum. Time is available. I will come back in the Q&A session for that. Then uh, uh, not only we, uh, India, but many, many countries are using QGIS. It is used in the US uh, National Security Agency. It is used by Swiss agencies and New Zealand uh, government agencies uh, for their mapping work and other work. It looks like this. If you start QGIS, you get an open blank page. Uh, I like to have it always with India map. So I have an India map. Uh, what you see on the left is all the data that you collect and put uh, for the mapping. On the top, you have tools that you could use, and there are many, many tools that you can bring in QGIS. And on the right panel, there are different options that you can choose uh, for processing your data, like calculations and stuff. All of this has been uh, very detailedly explained in tutorials, and you can also use our own spoken tutorials for it. The newest version is 3.16. Uh, I'm always using 2.18 because I have very good uh, knowledge about the tools, but you can use the newest version, 3.16 Hanover is being released now. It also gives you plugins. So you, if you have good computing um, knowledge and you would like to build the tools, like, uh, like a startup of tools, you can build the tools and give it to QGIS, they will host it for you. So each tool, uh, if you click, uh, it's called plugins. It will give you like what it exactly does. So it generates a matrix. So uh, you can you can enable this tool and then bring it in. So unlike proprietary softwares, only some tools you can use which are built by the company. But here, 
even a community built tool you can access any tool you can access that is built by the community and given in qgis and this is how it looks like you go to the plugins and you can see all these maps you can also bring google uh, open layers uh, bing roads everything you can bring in qgis it is very powerful not only that you can also do some uh, good analysis uh, research analysis models so spot is a a uh, hydrological model developed by us uh, geological survey and also housed by texas a&m which is a good university in the us and now they have combined it in qgis platform initially it was for the proprietary software now you can use this software so everyone is going into this so now i've given an introduction how do you learn and that is where uh, our own uh, team of fossi and spoken tutorials helps go to qgis.fossi.in you'll see this uh, beautiful page of resources Uh, how to get to uh, tutorials and forum especially questions uh, how we answer questions we also give fellowships for uh, very uh, talented students to conduct the uh, qgis research on campus in iit bombay so we are hoping that will happen again after covid situation and all these details you can get in the fossi qgis website what is fossi uh, fossi is uh, um the project that professor kanan mudgalia leads and it is for free open source software for education um the website is fossi.in uh, if you could if you go there it it shows you that it it promotes the use of open software for education there's lots and lots of open software and we uh, focus on some software with the resources which means we give uh, spoken tutorials and also manuals on how to use it right now the projects range from a uh, 9 to 10 and qgis is part of it from the fossi you can go to spoken tutorial website uh, and what does the spoken tutorial have is a tutorial of all these softwares that i have mentioned there's many many software projects if you click click all courses all the courses will come and in different languages we don't want to limit it to a particular language or a region so there are many many languages in india and we are trying our best to uh, make these uh, spoken tutorials um, very very uh, informative uh, video tutorials and in different languages because we should not have a language barrier i'll show you quickly uh, how it looks like the website um, you can go to qgis uh, in the search uh, projects and qgis is one project and you can see that already we have different languages uh, english we have the most 16 and that is being slowly translated into different uh, regional languages hindi kannada malayalam tamil and other things are coming so here you can see how do you install uh, how do you install in hindi english uh, kannada and also the right hand side you see if it is a basic advanced level thing so right now we are starting with the basics and intermediate we have come slowly we'll get into the advanced uh, tutorials for all the students so anyone can use this please feel free to use it what can we achieve so now we've seen that uh, you can use all these softwares and get the data from isro what can we achieve we can achieve data that can uh, help in different disciplines one example is agriculture um, uh, and you could see how uh, it can lead to a big data framework big data is with large volumes of data right and uh, for all of your uh, information uh, big data means large volumes of data in large frequency uh, and uh, your satellite data is default big data because it comes in very very big volumes and in high ref spatial and temporal resolution so it is very big data you take it you process it using qgis and you could use it in these kind of frameworks you can also use it for real time applications this is the recent uh, burevi uh, uh, cyclone that hit uh, south india very bad and uh, you could you could have uh, seen it being tracked beautifully in isro's team and how and what time it would impact everything can be mapped so all this data is in remote sensing data you can bring it into a qgis layer and then do these kind of maps uh, so this is one other application you can see how the locust uh, started uh, in africa and then moved to india right so so all this could be mapped uh, and it is better to see it visually so that you can comprehend what is happening right now this map is very famous uh, everyone sees it this is an open source uh, website you can go there get the data and put it in the gis environment and you could see how the hot spots are emerging so the dark blue hot spots are where the cases are more uh, you could see maharashtra right there and uh, you know how the other places are coming so all this is done by mapping and mapping is by qgis software also 
what does this do is in, in recent years, uh, normally what happens is your agency is there and policymakers, government agency is there and scientists like us, like we work in academics and different agencies, we take a problem and we try to solve it and give it to the community. Okay, so the community is on your right. We take the problem, we discuss it, uh, and then we give it. But what we're trying to do with this kind of a setting is we bring the community science, which means you give the data. You also take part in the problem solving so that it is a two-way process and you make these maps. So for example, if a district collector has a problem uh, to, uh, to understand a land use change, land cover, he need not come to us, uh, academics or agencies. He can directly go to the people and ask them to make these maps uh, because the data is free. Uh, no one's going to stop you from using the data or the software. And that is what we are promoting. The ways forward, uh, we would like to archive all these maps. What do you mean by archiving is by creating a database, a free open database for all of you to use these maps uh, because it is hard work you're putting and we want you to get recognized. Uh, I'll come in the later part of today's webinar on the submission part and I'll show you clearly how you get promoted for your work. Okay, uh, it will be hosted with unique names and users. So your name would be put on the map and what it can be used for. So those who want to use the map can easily contact you and say if they want to update the map, uh, then you will be the better person. Increasing potential for local collaborations. Uh, all the problems need local people also to solve. So your, your understanding of the maps can help. Uh, improvement of maps with local admin. As I said, your police station might need a map. Uh, you're during a flood, uh, as uh, some people are saying, uh, you need evacuation plans. You don't have to wait for IIT or others to make these maps, but you can actually make and help your local administration. The building capacity of mappers is the key, and with applications using ISRO data and QGIS is the goal. Uh, with this, uh, the, the biggest thing we would like to set up after this is a hackathon. How do you build tools using these maps and ISRO data? Uh, to make uh, live real life uh, problem solving tools. Right now you're making maps. The next part is hackathon. It is much bigger, uh, much more complex, uh, but it's very exciting that you will be working with big computers. So what you see right here is the supercomputer in IIT, and that is what uh, at level you'll be working with uh, when, you, when you happen with uh, hackathon. With this, I would like to stop, uh, I think right on time and um, I still have uh, three, two minutes. So let me open the POSI uh, website. Uh, okay, so yes. So uh, here's how the QGIS POSI website looks like. Uh, you can come down and read about uh, quantum uh, GIS. If you click here, you can look at other POSI projects, uh, all the projects that I have explained and, and built in here. Uh, so then you have your uh, resources, where to download, how to download QGIS, user manuals, documents, all the other projects in FOSI is also here. Uh, and we have already uh, had, we have been lucky to have some good uh, students that have participated. And these maps were made by the students and are published in international journals. So these uh, Kerala flood maps were published by a student last time. Okay. So you have all these uh, resources that you could use. I'll come back to spoken tutorials where you could click QGIS. You, you can just click here. You can have a lot of projects, a lot of projects that FOSI works directly. Okay. And let's say, for example, if I click R, then I have English uh, 23 uh, lectures. If I click QGIS, let me click QGIS, I have 16 lectures. Uh, let's click English and search. It updates itself. Okay. You don't need always uh, a high bandwidth. You can also download them. Uh, but let's look at one video. I'm just clicking this video. And it opens like this. Okay, So if I click it, you'll hear a live uh, audio. And you will also have a statement of what it is. So this is how we are promoting for you to use a, a new software, open source software, and giving you the resources on how to use it. There's, there's multiple uh, tutorials we are working on. So please uh, keep uh, visiting this website and uh, looking at different uh, tools that we create. And sometimes QGIS can be helpfully used with R and other things. So it's not only one software, uh, there's multiple softwares we can use. With this, uh, I'll just stop for question and answers. Uh, any questions from the team?
I'll look at the YouTube if there's any questions that needs clarification answers. No, sir. Okay. So uh, we are on time. Um, with this, I would like to stop um, my presentation part and I'll open it to the next presenter. Uh, let me give you a small intro. And okay. So next uh, part would be done by Mr. Sashikant Sharma, uh, who's the group director, Vedas Research Group. Um, and he'll be talking about the problem statements and the expectation from the participants. Thank you.